Hey folks, here we are in the uh, last podcast of this particular chapter, podcast 12.5. We're going to talk about the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. What in the world is that? Well, hey, that's this diagram right here. And so what we want to do is we want to learn about the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And as we do that, we're going to learn about a, sort of another way to look at stars. So it's kind of an important diagram. It's in fact like on all the CSAP tests, that's the Colorado State test. So it's a really important uh, diagram. And so we're going to learn how to use it and what it means uh, today. So let's do that right now. Okay. Hey, sometimes this is called the HR diagram. It's a plot of stellar temperature versus luminosity. Now, luminosity is how bright the star is, and we've got temperature. So temperature is down on this axis. It's very important that you copy this diagram down in your, in your podcast notes. And this is luminosity. Now, I want to illustrate something very important about the luminosity, though, is if you look at this diagram, something very important is noted here, that each of these lines is actually, it's not a linear diagram. It's actually a power of 10 diagram. So each time we go by luminosity, where the luminosity of the sun is 1, this is 10 times brighter, 100 times brighter, 1,000 times brighter, 10,000, 100,000, and a million times brighter. And then the, the same thing goes down here. So it's not what we call a linear scale, but a, but a power of 10 scale. And over here on this axis, it is a linear scale of temperature versus, no, it's not, 30, 10. I think this is a logarithmic scale. Yeah, but it's not the same type of a scale. So this diagram, it's important to understand what each axes are. It's still, you know what they are. It's luminosity versus temperature. But it creates an interesting diagram of stars. And we have uh, what we call right here, um, these are sort of the main stars along this plot. And then we've got little, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better term, we've got little uh, branches that come off of them, the giants, the super giants, and the white dwarfs, etc. So that's important to understand as we um, look at this. All right. Now, so like I said here, interestingly, most of the stars on the HI diagram lie along a smooth diagonal curve, upper left part to the diagram, to cool, dim, lower right. The, so they all follow, yeah, they just plotted all the stars, and they kind of found a pattern. So let's get some more here. And by tradition, the bright stars are placed at the top, and the dim ones at the bottom. It actually could have been done the reverse, but they, they just chose to do it this way for whatever reason. And the high temperature stars are the blue ones, and the cool ones are the red ones. And you can see that over here. This is 3,000 degrees Kelvin, and here we're at 30, 40,000 Kelvin. So the hot ones are on the left, and the cold ones on the, on the right, and then the bright ones on the top. So let's ask this question. Maybe you should pause the video. Which star would be the coldest, pardon me, the, yeah, the coldest, dimmest star? Where would you find that on the graph? Pause. Hit, that's correct. That would be where? Yeah, right down here. Stars found here. How about the hottest, brightest stars? That's right. They would be found up here. So that's kind of how you can uh, tell the difference between the different varieties of stars in this diagram. So it's interesting that they follow this very specific pattern called the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. All right, now the diagonal group of stars, the ones uh, along that main line through here, right, these stars right there are called main sequence stars. So you should write that down. It is written down in the diagram. Maybe you already got that copied down. So, and only, or uh, only, and 90% of all the stars that you find up when you look at the, the sky, um, they fit along the main sequence. There's a few exceptions, of course, in our two branches, or our several branches, the giants, the super giants, and the white dwarfs. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, that, they follow that particular deal. A few stars will be cool, but very luminous. The upper part, upper right hand part up here of the diagram. Um, but while the others will be hot and dim down in here, that's just not very often though. And so you don't see that as a, as a main option here. All right, as we look at this, let's talk about something called the Stefan Boltzmann Law. It's a key to understand the HR diagram. Uh, for stars of a given temperature, the larger the radius, the larger the luminosity. All right, that means if I have a small star and then I have a big star. So this is a small radius, right? And this is a large radius. What's true? The larger are brighter. And the smaller are dimmer. OK? That's kind of key to understand. And that's a, a function of something called the Stefan Boltzmann Law. OK, therefore, as one moves up the HR diagram, a star's radius must become bigger. So as you go up on the HR diagram, they go from small to bigger to bigger to bigger. On the other hand, for a given luminosity, the larger the radius, the smaller the temperature. So big stars tend to be colder. 
So big stars are cooler in temperature. Kind of weird. You think of the big ones being having more temperature, but they're actually cooler. So it's a little bit odd. Well, therefore, as one moves to the right, a star's radius must increase. The net effect of this is that the smallest stars must be in the lower left corner of the diagram and the largest in the upper right. All right. So let's kind of look at this from a perspective here. So let's go back to our diagram here. So we've got, here we go. All right. So that means as you go to the right, what happens to these stars? These are small stars, right? And that makes these are your large stars. And these are your cool stars. And these are your hot stars. Now that's just following the main sequence here. Um, of course, we have exceptions with the dwarfs and this kind of a thing. But that's important to understand. Well, speaking of the dwarfs, let's talk about them now. So stars in the upper left are called red giants. So upper left up here, they're red giants. So they're cool because they're red, but you can have a giant. Uh, but that's, these are kind of ones that don't obey the main uh, sequence sort of rule system, right? But that's gen those are generalizations or whatever, OK? Yeah, they're red because of their low temperatures. And um, the lower right, down in here, are called white dwarfs. They're small, and yet they're hot because they're, they're blue to white. This would be a blue dwarf right over here, which would be a little bit different, OK? Yeah, I think that's probably good enough to say that. Also, giants, dwarfs, and made sequence stars also differ in average density, not just diameter. So what's density? Density is uh, density is the mass divided by the volume. So um, typical density of a main sequence star is about one gram per cubic centimeter. That's the same density as water. While for a giant, it's 10 to the minus sixth grams per centimeter. That's 0 0.123456 grams per centimeter. So for our giants up here, their density is um, 100,000 times less than that of water and in our main sequence. So they have very low density. So these guys have a low density. And by contrast, by the way, the white dwarfs have a very high density. All right, let's talk about the luminosity classes. Remember, we learned about those in the last podcast as it relates to this. Another method was discovered to measure the luminosity of a star, other than using a star's magnitude in the inverse square law, which we talked about in the last podcast. It was noticed that some stars had very narrow absorption lines compared to other stars of the same temperature. Hmm. It also noticed that the luminous stars had narrower lines than less luminous stars. So when they're looking at the, the, the spectrum, their, their um, bands were thinner, for lack of a better term. So the width of the absorption line depends upon the density. Wide for high density, narrow for low density. So if I'm looking at a star, all right, um, how wide the lines are, let me change the color here. I think it'll be easier to see with a white pen. How wide these lines are, you can see they're getting wider the further I go, oops, hello. The further I go down this chart, the um, wider, the, say, this line gets, right? And so what that says is um, high density are for narrow. So this is a high density for narrow, and this is a um, lower density star for a higher. You can see that same pattern here with the reds. Notice how this absorption line gets thicker and thicker and thicker as time goes on. All right. So luminous stars, all right, luminous stars, what's that mean? That's the bright stars. All right, so luminous stars, that's the bright stars in the upper right-hand corner. So these are our luminous stars over here. Actually, pardon me, luminous stars are on the top, right? But there's not too many, yeah, hold on. Tend to be less dense, so these are the less dense. These ones over here are less dense. All right, and the HR diagram can be broken into luminous classes. 1A for a bright supergiant. 1B for just a supergiant. 2 is a bright giant. 3 is a giant. We've got subgiants, and we've got main sequence. So they've actually got a sort of a different classification by um, their luminosity. And so you can kind of see each of them, and they've got examples here in this chart. You know, you ought to, what you ought to do on this chart, which is a little different than the ones we were using, is to copy down another, just sketch. It doesn't have to be super... Um, accurate, but um, just to get the idea that there are super giants, 1A, su bright super giants, super giants, bright giants, giants, and sub giants, and then main sequence stars. And this kind of gives us then some classifications. Um, we're not going to go into too many details, but our sun is a G2 star. I think we talked about that in the last podcast. Okay.